that's all these things that I've done by the Killers. Really good song. Probably my favorite song by them. Hey guys, how you doing? Um, this is Luke again. Um, today's show, I think I'm gonna be talking. I'm gonna do a little bit different. Um, I'm not gonna be talking about necessarily movie, a movie or movies necessarily in general, but I'm just gonna be talking about. Um, really integrity of actors and actors decisions for what movies they do and kind of you know their strategies on how they you know pick what movies they want to do um let's just get into it uh, the first example that I wanted to say which I think is the at the far bottom of the spectrum is Adam Sandler I think Adam Sandler I do, I'm not a fan of Adam Sandler movies. I do not like them. I do not like what they represent. I hate that they make so much money. I think they suck. And the main thing is, okay, people always tell me, Luke, look, they're dumb. They're supposed to be dumb. It's just funny. Have fun with it. I, I get that, okay? I get it. But they're not. That's the thing. They're just dumb. They're not funny. I, I, I mean, I don't get... If you like fat people falling down or poop jokes and fart jokes, then I guess that that's funny to you. But it's just, it's not, they're not funny. They, they just simply are not good. They're not good films. They don't have any depth. And they're just, they're just bad. Straight up bad movies. And I, I, I hate that he's just so overpaid. He gets all this money and he just gets his friends together. And they basically go on a vacation. They don't even try. And it just, it makes me so mad because Adam Sandler is a great actor. He could be a, a fantastic actor. If you, if you want to see some of his great performances, look at, you know, everybody points to Punch Drunk Love, which he was very good in. Um, I think he, he totally should have been nominated for an Oscar for Rain Over Me. I mean, that is a, an amazing performance. If you think Adam Sandler can't act, watch that movie. It is great. Rain Over Me. And I think, seriously that shows that he can be a good actor when he tries he doesn't try and that's what I hate about it um, probably my favorite performance of his is in um, a movie called Funny People directed by Judd Apatow came out in 2009 a lot of people didn't like that movie I love it I it is I'll warn you it is a little depressing <laughs> I think people's main complaint with that is a movie that's called Funny People isn't funny. And they didn't really get that, the subtlety of that. And it, it it is a great movie. And that is, it totally displays what comedians are really like. And Adam Sandler plays an Adam Sandler-esque character and how depressed he is and like how he's just a bad, and it just, it's great. It is a great movie, and he is great in it. And he and like what I loved also about that movie was that Judd Apatow, who directed it. Um, if you don't know who he is, he is he really started off the modern raunchy comedy movies. Um, he's kind of like in the vein of he started out, you know, Seth Rogen's career and uh, Jonah Hill and. Michael Sarah, all those guys, that's kind of all in the Apatow crew. But Apatow started out as a stand up comic and he actually lived with Adam Sandler when they were young. And in the beginning of Funny People you see a young Adam Sandler making crank calls. That's actual footage of them actually doing that when they were younger. And of course they, they were both he wrote for S N L when Adam was on there and and he said he hated Adam because he was he could just make people laugh. Like, he would just go do comedy, and he wouldn't write anything, and he would just say dumb stuff, and people would laugh. And he's so talented, but he's lazy. Like, he just doesn't do anything. And the thing I love about funny people is Judd Apatow forced Adam Sandler to write new material, forced him to write a stand-up comedy gig and tour to get that back in his system. And... I was just like blown away. I was like, that is awesome, fantastic. And that, I mean, that movie is great. It is a great film. But I mean, I don't get why our audiences keep begging for more of these shit movies. I mean, they suck. I, they're just bad movies. Quit giving him all this money. Like, it's just, if he, if he would get, if he wouldn't, okay, I should, okay. Uh, if he would just get with like a young, talented filmmaker, 
get a decent script and you know have some depth in it the thing i think is most offensive about them about those movies is the added in depth they try and and throw in that means nothing it's meaningless and it makes and when the movie's so stupid it just makes the ah i mean okay there's this one uh the one that he did with uh jennifer aniston i think brooklyn decker was in it and dave matthews uh just go with it. That's what it was called. And Jennifer Aniston was fine. She was just Jennifer Aniston. But Adam was like some schlubby guy, like always. And he meets Brooklyn Decker. And they fall in love and have this deep connection. And then he wants to... Whatever. He... He wants to, he says he has kids, or, I don't, see, that's why it's so stupid. It's like, he has to pretend that he, that sh, he was gonna go to Hawaii with, I don't, it's really, uh, I mean, they're just stupid. They're stupid movies. But anyway, Jennifer Aniston's, like, his secretary, and she has these two kids, and then, like, she forces him to take them all to Hawaii or something because he's a rich doctor, and I think it was Hawaii. I see. I don't even know. And anyway, while they're there, they keep bringing up this thing where Jennifer Aniston's daughter uh, has kind of an eating disorder. Like, she just won't eat because she thinks she's fat or something. And she just won't eat. And they kind of glazed over it. I mean, they, they, they literally was tacked on to make you feel like this movie has depth. You're just like, oh, she won't eat, that's so sad. Like, they need to have, but that was it. It was just like one, but then, like literally, okay, they were in like a Chuck E. Cheese or some shit. And she's like, no, I'm fine. And then Adam Sandler makes some really dumb joke and makes her, and gets her to eat. And then Jennifer is like, thank you. And then they leave. And literally five minutes after that, you see her falling face down in mud because she was about to say something that would have got Adam Sandler in trouble with Brooklyn Decker. So he shoves her face in the mud. So it's like, oh, she has this eating problem. Oh, that's so sad. And then, oh, let's throw her in a fucking pile of mud. That's funny. I hate it. It's it's and it's in every movie. You can look for it. It's just like, oh, I'm sad because of this serious problem. They're like, oh, well, stupid fart joke here. And then people laugh and that's it. You know, I mean, it's just such a lazy way. It's just so lazy. I don't get it. And, like, one movie that did it recently, it was the new Vince Vaughn movie, which, I mean, <laughs> Vince Vaughn is getting seriously close to being Adam Sandler with all these shit movies he puts out. And they're all the same. But it was, I think it's called The Internship. No, not The Internship. That was with him and Owen Wilson. Um, business. Business? Trip. I don't know the one with Dave Franco and this other older guy they go to like Germany or something like I don't know anyway um and the internship was shit too I don't care what anyone says it's a it's a bad film um and the depth in that was that his son was getting bullied and well the fake depth I guess was that his son was getting bullied and I actually didn't mind the movie. It was full of Vince Vaughn bullshit, and that gets kind of annoying. But the fake depth was with his oldest son, who was a big, it was you know a bigger kid, um, pretty round, was getting bullied and was kind of having a tough time at school, and he. Uh, and, like, there was a stupid thing where he he didn't fit in with anyone, so he wanted to fit in with the goth, so he bought eyeshadow, but he bought, like, turquoise blue eyeshadow, and then everyone made fun of him. And then there was this moment at the end where Vince Vaughn's Skyping with him and, like, puts blue eyeshadow on. It's like, see, like, we're in it together, man. And, and that wasn't bad. Like, it, it was a little, like, a little too on the nose, you know, a little too, like... I'm getting bullied. Feel bad for me a little bit, but it that wasn't horrible. But the but the fact is, they took a serious thing that kids seriously deal with, 
and shat over it. Just was like, oh, isn't that funny? Like, if you want to add depth, add real depth. Make these characters real. Like, don't just have some side character who's sad. And you're like, oh, look, I'm a good guy. I helped you through it. Like, give your... Make them real people, you know? Or just don't have it at all and just be a dumb comedy. I mean, it... It is seriously ridiculous. Um, I... And Adam Sandler is the worst offender of them all. I... I I don't know what else to say. I just hate that modern audiences are giving him so much money. Like, why, 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 why? I don't even know. Why are you doing it? I can't. Just don't see Pixels. Please. Please don't give him any more money. Please. I... Because there's so many great actors. Like, I think the best example, one of the best of, of... Actors who have a, a super high integrity, um, who don't just do any movie, would be Jake Gyllenhaal right now. Um, I mean, Jake, he's been doing a lot of small, small movies that aren't making him a lot of money, that he just puts his heart and soul into, and is great. I mean, he is fantastic in every movie he does. And I'm it, lately... They've all been A pluses. I mean, I mean, it is a, it is a crime that he was not nominated for Nightcrawler. I mean that. I mean, he he lives and breathes that. There's a great interview with him. It's about a half hour on this YouTube channel called DP Thirty. Um, it's like I think they call it like an oral history of Hollywood or something. But it's a half an hour interview with Jake Gyllenhaal, and I mean he just talks about how much he loves the process, and he just picks movies that have amazing scripts with amazing filmmakers and he just does it and he like he takes months months and months to prepare to get in that role like i mean and then he lives it and he and he he does it for nothing for chunk change you know and then you have this fucking adam sandler making stupid ass fucking fart jokes and being a piece of shit i'm sorry um but Jake Gyllenhaal, like, I think the only bad movie that he's really put his heart and soul... Well, not put his heart, but starred in was Bubble Boy. And that is a horrible movie. But he was young, and I don't know why he did that, but it sucks. Um, but, I mean, Donnie Darko, that's in, that's in my top five favorite movies of all time. I absolutely adore that movie, and he is brilliant in it. Um... Lately, you know, it's been Prisoners, Enemy, Nightcrawler. Each one of those career perform. I mean, just out of this world, great. And I, he's fantastic. I mean, he is an amazing actor. And I wish that he would get more recognition for how, because he, and I, it, it's not an easy thing to do. I know I'm sitting here yelling at Adam Sandler, and I don't know what I, I... I think the easy route, the most common route, is to do what George Clooney does. You know, his famous saying is, you do one for them, you do one for you. So basically, you can kind of be a sellout, and then you do one you want to do, and then you do one for them. And it's hard for me. I get, I'm not ignorant to the point where I'm like, oh... I'm such a snob here, sitting like, well, if, if you if you don't make a masterpiece, then why even do it, you know? I'm not saying that. I get that you need to make money, and it's a job. And, like, I don't mind. Like Matthew McConaughey, he has great performances. He puts everything into it. But he has had a lot of just, you know, phoning it in tight, run-of-the-mill performances. But I get it. It's a job. You make money. Like, if it's just an easy part that'll get you a bunch of money, do it, you know? I understand that. I'm not just trying to sit up here to be an arty, artsy snob about it. I understand. But just when you're Adam Sandler and you just do horrible movie after horrible movie after horrible movie, like, it's just because he doesn't need any money. Like, I don't get why you're... If I was in his position, I would find young, talented filmmakers and be like all right let's make this movie do you have a good idea let's get this going you know let's help you get your name out there instead of just doing the same bullshit over and over um another one you know i said matthew mcconaughey george clooney um 
a lot of great actors that you really like will have like really great performances sometimes and they'll be in a shit movie and they'll phone it in and it's hard to see that it's not fun to watch but we gotta not be ignorant in the fact that this is a job and they got probably a lot of money for doing that so as long as they're getting work I guess that's fine but um I think another actor not probably not quite as stingy as Jake Gyllenhaal is right now as far as picking roles would be um Leonardo Leonardo DiCaprio man Leo he his recent um teaming with Martin Scorsese in everything pretty much seems like every Scorsese movie that comes out Leo's gonna be in it which is the best thing for your career honestly <laughs> Um, but he, I mean, no one denies that he, he's, he might be the best actor working right now. He could be, and he doesn't have an Oscar and everybody keeps like harping about that. He'll get one. There's no doubt that he's going to get one one day. And honestly, I think of all his performances, I don't think there was one that was super, they were Oscar nominee worthy, but I think every year he's gotten beat fairly. I mean, I don't think there's been one that was just like, wow that was like one of the greatest performances I've ever seen I don't think that that's happened yet and I think it will I think there's no doubt I think if he wanted to because I think okay this next movie coming out um of his directed by um Alfonso Cuaron who or not Alfonso Cuaron um oh man what's his name uh uh Alejandro Iñárritu, uh, the guy who created and directed uh, Birdman. He is directing this new movie called... Oh, man, what's it called? It's the one about um, Hugh Glass uh, starring Leo. Oh, man, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. Uh, Alejandro Iñárritu... Uh, it comes out next January, I think. And I think that probably could be Leo's best bet to win. I mean, I think it could be... I, I, I don't know. I just have a really good feeling this could be the one that really... The Revenant, that's what it's called. It comes out... Um, let's see... January 9th, 2016, okay, I think, because that, I mean, if you saw Birdman, that's one of the best films I've ever seen, I mean, it is a masterpiece, to say the least, and Alejandro, I think that could be a match made in heaven, man, I mean, I think he and um, Denis Villeneuve are the maybe the two best kind of more artsy directors working right now um and Denae Villeneuve directed Prisoners and Enemy and he is also going to do the new uh, Blade Runner sequel but anyway sorry um <clears throat> as far as The Revenant starring you know Leo I think that could be because he's with a, a up and coming fantastic I mean one of the best working right now uh, filmmakers and not like a big name, you know, but just super talented. And I think this could be the one because if you don't know the Hugh Glass story, obviously I live in South Dakota. I'm from South Dakota. I know the Hugh Glass story. But it's this guy who was a trapper in the 1800s, uh, and uh, he and his friends were out trapping, and he got attacked by a bear. And he was knocked unconscious, and his friends thought he was dead, so they buried him alive. And he dug his way out and crawled like a hundred miles and floated down the Missouri River to Fort Pier and actually met up with his friends later. Now, I think how they're going to spin it is more of a revenge tale, which, I, I mean, I just read it when I was a young kid, and I actually did a report on it. So I don't know if it was just the kitty version that I read, but it sounds like they bury him alive and he's on this revenge path to... Uh, get him but I, I'm not for sure 100% but it, that looks fantastic and I think that could be the one where he really becomes gets his Oscar I think this might be his best shot
because I think it'll mostly be him, and I think you could have a lot of really good close-ups, probably some good monologues, and that, and it, that could help him quite a bit. Um, we're getting kind of towards the end here, but another actor I wanted to bring up. I brought him up last time. I'm going to bring him up again. One of my favorites, Nick Cage. If you want to talk about interesting acting choices, I, I don't know how you could not bring up Nicolas Cage. Um, he... He makes so many shit movies, and I love him. Every single bad movie Nick Cage is in, I absolutely love. Because he just, he just does a freak out, and it is great. It is awesome. But <clears throat> he won an Oscar. I mean, he is a, he is a fantastic actor. He, he's one of the best working. And if you get him to not phone him in, you get a good performance out of him, it's great. I mean, it, and that's why I love him. Because even like when he's really in a bad movie, he goes all out. And just, it, it's great. I think, and the reason he does so many, like, direct-to-home video, VOD movies nowadays is because he lost a lot of money. And that was because he blamed it on his financial manager, but he bought, like, four castles in Europe. And just, if you look up, like, his financial troubles, he bought a bunch of shit, like, that he shouldn't have ever thought it was a good idea to own. And he actually sued his financial manager because of the troubles he had. But, um, but he, I love it. Every, every um, bad movie he does is great. And he has to do a bunch because he needs money. So he just does them all. And he's a big enough name where he can get any role he wants. And I'd love to see him because he, I mean, he's, Hollywood royalty as far as his uncle is Francis Ford Coppola um, I would love to see a resurgence of him I'd love to see him in a couple more Oscar nominated roles and that's how he keeps getting work so he'll just do shit movie shit movie shit movie shit movie and then just like a really small critically acclaimed movie that everyone's like oh wow that's Nicolas Cage like he's a great actor and then shit movie shit movie shit movie shit movie shit movie and then another small independent critically acclaimed movie and they're like wow that's i mean that's nicholas cage and the shit movie shit movie shit movie that's how it always goes um <clears throat> if you want some great nick cage performances i'd suggest watching leaving las vegas that's the one that he won the oscar for um then adaptation charlie kaufman movie which is great directed by spike jones then um joe is probably my favorite from this last year and um Otherwise, Bad Lieutenant, Port of New Orleans, that's amazing. That's Vintage Cage, 100%. Um, <clears throat> but I think that'll do it for me today. Um, thanks again for watching. As you can see, I'm a Star Wars fan, Mos Eisley, but I didn't talk about Star Wars today. I held back. So um, until next, next time, you know, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully another one will be coming soon. If you want to subscribe, that'd be awesome. Otherwise, I'm out.